Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Smash Ultimate Modding Workshop. In this episode, I'll be covering how hitboxes are defined and how to edit them. Here I've got Kirby's down tilt script. I'll go over how I got the script in episode 4. It's got two hitboxes here, but I'm going to remove one to make it a little bit easier to understand. I'm also going to put each element of the hitbox on a different line to make it more obvious what does what. And here's the hitbox after I've dissected it. This first part that just says fighter, you shouldn't have a reason to edit it, so don't touch it. The zero is the ID. It's the unique number of a hitbox. Any given character cannot have two hitboxes with the same ID out at the same time. So just keep all the hitboxes you define as zero, one, two, etc. If you already have a hitbox out with a certain ID and try to declare another one with the same one, it'll simply replace it. Part is pretty similar to ID. I would recommend never touching it and just keeping it at zero. This section is the bone the hitbox is attached to. Usually it's at the top, but sometimes it can be arm L, leg L, clavicle C. In this scenario, it's toe R. I would just recommend using top, but if you're editing a vanilla script like I am, I would just keep it the same. This is of course the damage. The only caveat is that it's damaged before the 1v1 multiplier is applied. Next up is the angle. I have this very crude diagram here to explain how angles are defined. Zero is straight right, and they move from 0 to 360 counterclockwise. But wait, you're probably saying... This moves angle is 361. What does that mean? The page for angle on SSB wiki has a great explanation. Also, this link will be available on item 2 in the description. 361, which we usually call the Sakurai angle, starts at about 0 degrees, but as damage increases, it goes to 45 degrees. The only other special angles you'll see are from 363 to 368, which are just various autolink angles, which are usually just used for multi-hit moves. These next three are knockback growth, fixed knockback, and base knockback. Base knockback is how much knockback is dealt at zero. Knockback growth is how quickly knockback grows as percentage increases. And fixed knockback is usually used for connecting hits, and causes the move to do the same knockback regardless of percent. This is the size of the hitbox, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is the position in x, y, z, and it's always relative to the bone. If the bone you're using is top, x is left right, y is up down, and z is actually towards or away from the camera. This is x2, y2, z2. In simplest terms, it's how you make those long stretchy hitboxes. The hitbox starts at the first position up here, and stretches to the second. Note, if you're not using it, it has to say none none none. It cannot say zero zero zero, it has to be none none none. And if you are using it, you have to format it like this. You have to put sum, and then in brackets, the position that you're using. So this would stretch from 4.300 to 0, 5.06.0. Hit lag is how much more hit lag should be applied. SDI is how effective SDI is. There's not really a reason to do anything with clang rebound or facing restriction, so you can pretty much just ignore those. Set weight is if knockback is affected by weight, usually used in conjunction with fixed knockback. This right here is how much extra damage should be dealt to shields. For reference, Shield Breaker has the set to 2, which destroys, if I remember correctly, 90% of the shield. This one is the chance of the opponent getting tripped from the hitbox. This is Kirby's down tilt, so it's a 35% chance. Rehit rate is usually just used for multi-hits. It decides how long until another hitbox can hit an opponent. Usually just have it set to 0. Reflectable and absorbable are pretty self-explanatory, and they're usually just used on projectiles. Flinch list and disabled hit lag are also pretty self-explanatory. Direct hitbox is set to true if the hitbox comes directly from the fighter, and it's set to false if the hitbox is on something like a weapon. This is ground air. It decides if grounded, aerial, or both opponents can get hit by the hitbox. If you want just grounded opponents, collision situation mask G. If you want just aerial opponents, collision situation mask A. 
but usually you'll want this set to GA for both ground and air. You probably shouldn't touch hit bits or collision parts, so I won't explain them. Friendly fire is if the hitbox can hit players that are on the same team as you. Now, the effect is where it gets fun. This is how hitbox can freeze the opponent, or paralyze, or stun, or do a lot of other fun things. In item 3 of the description, I'll have this site. It lists all the collision attributes that a hitbox can have, among many other things. Here's the whole list. Just the ones in yellow. Quite a few of them, like purple, fire, magic, and slash, are just visual. This is how loud the sound effects of the move are. It can either be S, M, or L. This is the sound that plays when the opponent is hit by the move. I'd recommend not touching it, but there's some reasons why you might have to do that. I'll discuss in episode 6, which is about porting moves. This last one is just what type a hitbox is. It's just used for spirits. You know, like the fist attack up, or magic power up, or whatever. It's just for those. I'm now just gonna play around with a few of these values and show y'all what happens. I'm gonna set the collision attribute to water. I'm gonna up the shield damage. I'm gonna make the hitbox a lot bigger. I'm only gonna have it do one damage. I'll have it send straight up. And I'll give it a lot more base knockback. I'm gonna go build the plugin and put it in my mods folder. Then I'll be right back. Now, as you can see, when I do Kirby's down tilt, it has all of the effects that I mentioned previously. As usual, the code I used will be available in the description under item 1, and I hope this helped! Happy modding!